Okay, so this is luncheon probably 39 or 40 instead, because <laughs> all mm -hmm. the others, I lost the recordings to them. That is my fault. <laughs> um, yeah, this is for, for the viewers. Uh, the explanation for that. <laughs> um, so that is my bad. Um, uh, I suppose, um, like I said, we'll, we'll figure out, um, what exactly I can salvage, uh, this week, as we're now officially fully caught up, um, but we'll jump into today's topic after I show today's lunch. It's a little greasy looking, mm. but it is, um, smothered potatoes with potato pie. Mm. Sorry, smothered hamburgers with potato pie, so with some brown gravy and everything. Mm -mm. Um, so today's topic, if you saw it in Big Brain Talk, was um talking about um supernatural and some of our encounters with the supernatural. Um I know Lady Stone has had a few because she has the ability to see these things. I so said we're talking about the supernatural today, and um, I guess when you're done eating, we'll get to your experiences and everything, because, <laughs> again, you can see that stuff. Uh -huh. So, but I'll let you eat first. <laughs> um, so, Andy, have you had any experiences with the supernatural, or what are what are some of your thoughts on the overall supernatural, you know, entities mm -hmm. from well. hell or heaven you know well we know they exist it, it um it's just and um there's many other things besides that um and it all, it all just depends on but you know some people have seen them yeah. some people have not you know it really depends on the person right i mean like i was just explaining um, Sarah here has a bit of an open nerve to them. She can outright see them, um, in full. Um, I can't, um, at best, sometimes I get a, you know, if we have been attacked, um, I've had a feeling like eyes are on me, um, but that's about it. Um, and then of course there was that scary story I'm going to re-upload that I embellished, um. I uh, embellished it to make it more scary. But um, the closest supernatural experience I really had was where I could, like, feel spirits around me was... I was... It was um, senior year of high school, and my great-grandma had just died. Um, so we were going to her funeral, and I got food poisoning on the way there. <laughs> um, so, my body was basically purging itself. Um, I was really sick. I was just puking my guts out. And, you know, obviously, Mom needed time to, uh, to properly see over to Grandma's body, and she let me just, you know, kind of lay down at, at, in this little, like, sort of kitchen area where there was a couch at the funeral home. And... Oh, there's Nate. Mm. Nate. Um, I was just. Uh, I guess I'll continue my story. Um, there so, you go. so um. Who is this? I ent. Oh, there's Nate. Okay, can you hear me, Nate? Yes. Okay. Wait, which, um. Which episode? Um. 38 or 40, because again, I lost some of those recordings. I am so sorry about okay. that. Okay, so hello YouTube, hello Odyssey. Welcome to the It's Podcast episode something. <laughs> we'll catch up, we'll, you know, yeah. We'll it, it's it a bit of a messy mess, but I mean, hey, it's okay. You haven't lost much, I think, I hope. Anyways, we're no. back. Yeah, um... Anyways, um, I was in the middle of uh, relaying a supernatural experience. We'll get to some of yours next, Nate. But um, my supernatural 
experience like a, like I was explaining in um, this like scary story that I embellished and I'll re-upload. Um, but um, it was basically about um, when I was senior in high school and um, I was going to my great grandma's funeral. I was sick with food poisoning. So I think it was partially because I was in a weakened state. But I got up from the couch in the like sort of kitchen area of this funeral home to find the bathroom. And I opened the wrong door. The door I opened was actually towards where they were storing a lot of other bodies that were about to have funerals as well. And yeah. I felt a lot of presences in that room. And I definitely felt like I wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I was like, okay, I'm not supposed to be in here, so I'm just going to close the door before anything uh, unwanted follows me. <laughs> yeah. And that was the closest thing to an actual like supernatural experience I've I had because I again I could feel like a f a few of the people in that room still hadn't left it yet. Yeah. If you if you catch my drift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so um Nate, what's your experience with the supernatural? I would say I'm pretty sensitive to it. You are? And what? You are? Yeah. Well, I can, like, you know, me. feel stuff very well. And, yeah. And I can, well, like, also, like, when I'm sort of, like, uh, sometimes this YouTuber I follow does, like, you know, sort of a quote unquote spooky video. Mm -hmm. When, like, you know, like, uh, the, he goes over, like, uh, I think it's, like, r slash ghosts or something but like, like you know where people post videos from their security cameras and other stuff uh -huh. and i can just like you know tell oh that's that and that and that's that and that <laughs> just so you can tell like what's fake and what's real well i'm not sure about like that but you know mm -hmm. i can like you know hey that's like just a just like soul of a bug or, mm -hmm. hey, that's just leftover energy being, like, you know... <laughs> right. Splattering um, across the room. But my, like, you know, my... Uh, well, there was one strong, like, supernatural experience when... Uh, how old? Uh, I was maybe 13, 14, maybe, something like that. We were mm -hmm. on, like... Uh, special kind of school thingy uh yeah so we were in like in a cabin-ish thingy i don't know and mm -hmm. me and my at the time bestie we were in the room and we were talking about like you know about supernatural shit and that mm -hmm. and both of us could feel like and and like you know very clearly it was a very solid feeling uh, something like you know sliding down on us like you know on the like our like midsection like you know flying through so like you know probably just from the bed or like you know top like you know to the ground mm -hmm. and, you know, like, and we were like oh <laughs> so and just but yeah it like nothing else happened afterwards so yeah mm. Okay. So that was I, I one. Should, mm -hmm. huh? I should relay another one of mine. Um, so I'm pretty sure where I work at is haunted. <laughs> um, and I can, I can relay this. In fact, a few of my coworkers actually back it up. Um, when I go into work on Saturdays, now, here's the thing. We work in what used to be like a Chinese restaurant, but, um, Normally, from on the weekdays, the office is pretty occupied. Um, it's a company of about 50 to 60 people most days. Um, but 
on the weekends, we are down to a skeleton crew whenever, whoever is working. So it's usually me and one other person in our <laughs> section. Mm -hmm. So I was working with someone named Diana and we're no joke. You know, we're not getting any calls at the moment. And we hear footsteps by the front door and we turn around. There's no one there. And I'm like, oh, shit, this place is haunted. I mean, um, what do you like? I don't want to consider that just a haunting. Like, you know, someone could be just passing. There wasn't anybody. <laughs> there was well, nobody in the I, customer well, service Someone section. like, you know, someone dead, you know. Yeah. Someone dead right. could be just passing. Like, you know, just like, yeah, just, let, let, let me walk here. Well, it doesn't help that, you know, Wichita was, you know, it's by the t uh, two rivers which is a very sacred indian indian place well, and, there, um, there's your explanation yeah i mean we're probably on some kind of burial ground without a doubt <laughs> <laughs> that's that's almost a given um and then on top of this um even when we don't hear the footsteps there is all sorts of noise inside my manager juan's um uh, office like i i hear stuff moving around in there not like a ba a turning on of the ac no like something falls off his desk oh yeah it's and does it it's like really... fall for real or it's just like it's just the noise uh, it falls for real like i took ah. a look through like the the glass in there and something and i think i couldn't <laughs> tell exactly what it was or maybe like it was like some kind of a uh, pen holder or something, but it <laughs> fell onto the floor. <laughs> For real. Oh my goodness. It, it, if that, like, and, and does it keep happening? Like, like yeah. stuff like, you know, make knockdowns. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't happen it's like, like I said, when Juan isn't in his oh, office. Oh, they're having office and, fun. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's during the weekdays. It doesn't happen then, but... <laughs> On the weekends, like I said, when like few people are in there, it definitely happens. <laughs> I, try, I, I don't. Well, I mean, like you are like a sort of like I mean, like you know, you could try talking to them. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. That is not the kind of things you talk to. <laughs> uh, yes, it is. They're just fucking knocking pens over. Talk to them. Um, at first, that's how it starts, but it, um, according to Sarah, it does get progressively worse if you give them attention. Eh, depends. I mean, is that, I mean, you're the expert here, my love, since you see them. Is that typically the case? When you try and make contact, it always opens the door for something else. Right. Something much, much worse. Mm-hmm. So when people, like, may go, no, not the way we actually yes when you try and do ouija boards or just go give me your name hello and it's just like you open the curtain now the veil that protects us is no longer valid mm -hmm. so i don't ask for names i just same entity that uh you're trying to talk to it could be something much worse lurking in the background which is what always happens which is why people who mess with ouija boards are complete and total idiots because yeah, the yeah I know Ouija boards have like a shit ton of rules. That's why I'll never like you know come close to one. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I know that those those especially nah hands off no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when but people yeah, I mean, go reach out and go, is my aunt here? The demon just goes, oh okay. I got my info. This is easy. Yeah. And you feed it information by just being an idiot and asking, and do you remember you got me that doll for my birthday? Oh, okay. Yep. Sweet. <laughs> and uh, think of it like this it's sort of like a robber knocking at your door who is simultaneously an internet hacker. 
It's more like a psychic well, that's a scam artist because all they got to do is just go, do you have anybody in your family with start, that had your name starting with the letter M? Mm -hmm. M is one of the most common letters to have a name with associated with it. So people are automatically going to assume um, assume that it's, oh, Maria, my aunt, Michael, yeah. or Michael, my dad, and so on. So that's basically what it is. Is that you're already feeding that info to them by being an idiot, thinking that they have like, mm. this gift. Mm -hmm. Like there was, there was that one psychic that South Park made fun of. Um, what was his name? What's an Edwards? Uh, John Edwards. I think so. Yeah. Like no, Andy. Did you did you ever hear about John Edwards? Okay, so John Edwards here in America, and also there was Sylvia Brown, who <laughs> we well know of from John Tron. Um, but j people like John Edwards and Sylvia Brown are fake psychics. Basically, they are confidence tricksters who, um, again, do what Sarah describes, which is called cold reading, where they, you know, guess the name of one of your relatives, and because you've, you know, if you're a foolish person, can you give them that confidence after they've made that guess on the first or second try? You know, then it's like basically. Family Guy did it where Peter was like, I'm guessing something big just happened in your life. And the lady goes, Oh my God, yes, my husband died from a car accident. Yeah. It's like you take a, a wild guess, and chances are that guess is. That's a pretty common guess. Most people who, it depends on who you talk to, view something as big, whether it be like, oh, yeah, I just got a new car, or yeah, my husband, you know, did this. Yeah. And if you're going to a psychic, chances are one of those things has happened. Uh, like I said, that's just how a Ouija board works. You're yeah. an idiot for trying to mess with one. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why you don't mess with them. <laughs> exactly. And it's why, like I said, when there's that whatever it is that's in Juan's office or, you know, in, in the office generally and decides to mess around with things when it's just me and one other person, I don't call out to it. <laughs> well, because you're more susceptible to give it attention when there's not as much action going on. Yeah. Which is why a lot of times things happen when it's just either one or two people or it's super late at night. Mm-hmm. It just, it's because you can give it attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it's qu more quiet around a lot of people. Because the, more, the more of the people, more the uh, more of the people, the more it's going to be like, I can't do anything. Yeah, because that's the thing. If, you know, it knocks something over, well, anyone could take responsibility for it. <laughs> yeah. By yourself, your imagination runs rampant, going, oh my god, what was that? Because mm -hmm. a lot of things, you know, as stereotypical as it sounds, does feed off that energy you give it, which is fear or whatnot. Uh, yeah. So because you're scared and hyper-focused on that, it's feeding off of that. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. This is why it's interesting that even, you know, fictional supernatural things like vampires... One of their rules is they you have to be have it invited them in. You know? That yeah, just stems from one thing, which is being an idiot and breaking down that veil. Yep. What supernatural things did you want me to talk to you about? Well, I just wanted your input on like some of um the things you've seen if you're willing to talk about them. Again with your ability. Like what? Well, um, I I know you see animal spirits. You've told me about that. Apparitions. Apparitions. Um, but you've also seen, you know, pretty horrid things. Like, you said there was that one white-haired lady that followed you and Clay around. And your father, yeah. And... Do you, do you know if this is a malevolent spirit or some kind of demon? They're the same thing. Oh, they're the same thing? Yeah, you just 
So demons really are more or less just corrupted people. Not necessarily. Demons are what are under different princes and kings of hell. Right. But um I don't know if it's a witch or anything that's attached itself to my family. Because it seems like a generational thing. <clears throat> because I've seen her in my dreams. My dad has seen her in uh seen her in person and in his dreams, and my brother has seen the same thing. So it's kind of odd that we see the same thing. Yeah. The exact same way. Yeah. And there's no there's no chalking that up to just coincidence. <laughs> it's just weird because we never really spoke about it until I said something, and then my brother goes, I've seen that woman, and then my dad goes, oh, great, my kids are thinking of it now. Mm -hmm. And, again, the I suppose the key to defending yourself against something like that is to not give it attention. Right. Now, sometimes that doesn't always work, unfortunately. Yeah, you can't, Some sometimes you can't just outright ignore it, especially if it's really wanting to get in. You have to work on focusing on protecting yourself. Yeah. So, which is why certain amulets or even just doing simple tasks can help. Yeah, like cleansing. Right. Yeah. But um, also more about yourself because if you think about it, when you're at your strongest, what really happens to you spiritually or even physically? You're guarded. Right. But when you're at your weakest, you know, things hurt more, things yeah. are more prominent. Yeah. Like I said, that that's that's why I was probably able to feel all those presences in that room when I was, you know, very weak and sick. So with that, it's like that's why it's important to take care of yourself, not only physically, but mentally. Yeah. Because th you're more susceptible to... Um, horrible things happening, influences, energies. Yeah. As stupid as it may sound to the atheist or whatnot, it's very real to the people who experience this. Yeah, this is why my dad, he's way too much of a rationalist sometimes, and he won't bless, his, bless the house that he built. And it's like, Dad, you need to bless... I, I know you're not a religious man, but you need to bless this house. And he, he won't... You won't listen to my stepmom on that, or Sarah, for that matter, even though he really should do this. <laughs> oh, shit. Did Morocco chew the cord? Yep. Oh, son of a bitch. Do what? Um, Sarah got this massager, and Morocco just chewed the cord on it. Lol. <laughs> but, um... What a dog. Yeah, he... That's what he does. He just chews cords. Um, but, um, yeah, Nate. Um, so, I guess we'll move on from sort of the more um, evil stuff <laughs> or um, demonic stuff. But, um, I mean, do you want to share a story? I, I would actually love if you shared a story. Nate, you down for Sarah sharing a story? I mean, yeah, sure, if we all still have time after what, I mean, like, you know, the next one, I have just, like, you know, it's, it's shortish. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll share two more stories, so, uh, oh, well, you, what was the thing you wanted to share, Nate? Me? Uh, it was, like, uh, um, uh, another experience this time, like, you know, with, with my... With one, with my longest part, uh, longest running partner, like you know, we were in my old room. I guess <laughs> I can call it like you know an old room at this point. And we had a candle lit, a candle that I still have, and mm -hmm. like you know, uh, and there was like you know no, no windows opened, no uh, no nothing, like you know that could. Like be stuff, and we were reading through a pasta recipe book that I still have. Mm -hmm. And then we like you know saw the 
a sort of flame, like, you know, moving at certain, like, you know, recipes that we, there you go. So we so, read on, and we watched it. I saw, like, a wisp? Uh, no. It was just like, you know, uh, probably just like, you know, spirits moving the flame, like, you know, when it, uh, I think. Yeah, I think from the like you know from the info uh, from the information that like you know that we could say like you know if it if the flame was still or flickering, like you know when it's uh, when we read something that like you know it like kind of like agreed with or like like an ingredient or I don't know just something. So you guys like read the ingredients aloud and it moved the flame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more like, just, just like or just like you know the, the uh, most like like you know the recipe names and then like the ingredients. So basically, what you took forever to say is one time you think a spirit was agreeing with what you were reading. To say, yeah. Interesting. I mean, sometimes there are you know friendly spirits like that, or just <clears throat> again things that just kind of want to mess around a little bit. I've only um, had this, like you know friendly spirits experiences. That's why he's wondering why it takes so fucking long. Is that he can't tell a fucking story <laughs> coherently? Wants to add extra words in there. Yeah, just I want to lay out the scene. Hmm. There's better ways to do that than going a book I still have, a candle I still have. Well, you can do it your way. I'll do it my way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that it's not coherent. That pisses me off even more. Like if I was a listener, I didn't know you. It would have pissed me the fuck off and I would have stopped the thing going, oh my god, how can I get through this episode without incoherent babbling? Well, sorry. <laughs> Jesus, like, Christ. All right, well then, um, let's go with your story, my love. Um, Here's how you set the scene. It was dark that night. It was in the middle of winter, so the air wasn't circulating because why would you need air to circulate during the middle of winter? Right. The fan wasn't on. There was, the vents were closed. I am laying there in the darkness. I could still see around me. But all of a sudden, this dream catcher that was hanging from my stepsister's ceiling started twirling as if something was blowing on it. And the air got frigid. Not like, oh, it's cold in here. No, it was, this is not normal cold. Right. And I remember sitting there, I'm going, okay, this is fucking creepy. And as the thing twirled faster, I see this white wisp around it. And it's coming towards me. And the closer it got, the more I couldn't breathe. It was like I was being suffocated. And I was trying to draw breath, and as it got closer, it started getting mm. hot. Yeah. Like a sauna. And I'm like sitting there going, <laughs> and I finally closed my eyes, and I was basically praying for it to go away. Mm -hmm. As soon as I found the strength to do that, it went back to normal. Yeah. That <laughs> is descriptive. Yeah. See, that's how you set a fucking scene. You don't need to go with a dream catch oh, my stepsister got back in 1492 <laughs> from a witch who was drowning, saying, here, catch this. <laughs> and it's been in the family for 2,000 years by passing it down by going, I will this to you, and I will this to you. <laughs> yeah, that's that would be a long way of saying it. <laughs> Well, with the book I still have, with the candle I still have. Is there anything else you have, you hoarder? <laughs> I what? A hoarder. Um, Jesus Christ. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm not a hoarder, I'm a collector. There's a difference. <laughs> no, there's a difference between just one that embellish where you're, you think you sound intelligent, but you actually don't. The point of setting the scene. I don't want to. I uh, my point isn't to sound intelligent. Well, if it's make you sound like a fucking idiot. Congrats. 
Oh my well, god. Well, yes, that's why I call this the Idiots Podcast. Haven't you noticed yet? <laughs> I don't know why you think that's funny. It's actually very sad. Well, to you, maybe, but not to me. How do you have friends? Uh, I wonder that as well, but eh, somehow, <laughs> somehow I still do. No, you're not. You're just, you're just very blunt, my love. And a lot, some people just can't take that. But um, I guess. Story. Huh? about what not to pay attention to something is a friend and I were at this Italian restaurant. It's an old Italian restaurant. You could tell the floors were oh, you could tell it had a lot of traffic. It was one right. of those places. Where well, the linoleum is peeling. Uh, no the pink really. Yeah. This is when three mm. walls and then hardwood floors. And we were eating and what it got really cold on one side and we're just like AC vent going on. And next thing we hear that we hear loud footsteps. And it comes right at us. But there's nobody there. It's like right next to us. And it keeps walking back and forth. And we're the only two mm. in that restaurant. Yeah. Well, it's someone like, sounds fucking agitated. Yeah. Huh? It was like, okay. And so we got up and looked around like, hey, maybe there's it's in the other room. Nope, nobody was there. It was just us two. And it kept walking back and forth. Again, that's one of those things that's trying to get your attention. Oh, we gave it attention because we're like, really? Yeah. I want to enjoy my fucking meal. Right, but I mean, like, it's wanting to get in, in the door, so to speak, effectively. I did. I was like, I want to enjoy my fucking meal. Can you not? <laughs> right. Footsteps got further away. Right. And I was like, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that is also one way to get rid of those malevolent spirits. It's literally to tell them to fuck off. I don't think it was malevolent. But it was... It was definitely... Annoying. Or something. Yeah. Just walking back and forth. Almost like a a repeat of time. Yeah. That's one one theory some people have, is that spirits are just trapped in the period of time in which they died. You know, and they're, they don't realize that they are dead. You know, they're, and they're, or they ha- probably have some idea, but they're angry about it. You know? I think that's like certain, like, type or yeah. subtype. Yeah. But yeah. But I guess to cap this off on a more pleasant note, um, there are good things about the supernatural. Like, um, when we lost Ringo, he's been visit, he visits us still. You know, in our dreams, you know, and when we first lost him, you know, he would, you know, come to us and still lay with us, you know, and, you know, thank God for you, my love, you know, you pointed, pointed out his presence to me so I could feel it a little bit, you know. So he came visited with Morocco. Yep. Showed Morocco the ropes and everything, how to make us smile and everything. Because after that dream, he was a cuddle bug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know people think you're crazy for believing that stuff, and that's fine. No, not everyone can be on the same page with the supernatural. Yeah. And a lot of people have a more <laughs> rational way of thinking and also explaining things by either going, I'm tired, you know, or it's like, you're depressed, you're for you. Okay, look, you're agitated, so it seems like everything's against you right now. Yeah. They just it can explain it away with scientific reasoning. But there's certain things, <laughs> for me, as my experience, I can't scientifically explain. Yeah. That's the main thing with supernat- the supernatural. Um, so I, I guess we'll uh, do closing thoughts now. Um, Nate, in terms of the good and the bad in terms of the supernatural. What's your closing thoughts? Uh, well, I'm going to just take a quote from a song and dead hearts are everywhere. Some are good, some are bad. And yeah. yeah. Um, Andy, your closing thoughts? Well, uh, I will say, actually, I'll say two things. One, one, spirituality is um, is is science. What? They're the same thing. Real science. 
Um, because you can explain you can explain can stuff like spirits, and God, and all that using using actual science and logic. So there you go. And and the second thing, yeah, and in, in some respects you can. Yeah. Okay. The second thing is if all right, um, so you know, even if you don't well, believe it, you have one more. A lot, of, um, all the satanic okay, politicians ahead. and bankers do. That's why they sacrifice children on altars and shit because they want to play Satan. Yeah, that is yeah. true. Um, as, as the saying goes, you may not believe in God, but He does believe in you. For some reason, people want to believe there's a devil more than there's a God. Yeah, that's the sad part. Um, but I, it it there is that line from the Count of Monte Cristo where I'll, I'll close this out with that uh scene and the quote from it is that I don't know if you've read the book The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. Um, but, um, in it, he's escaping, um, the prison Chateau d'If, and they're almost out, but the cave kills the priest who's been teaching him, you know, economics and sword play and everything, and he pulls the priest into the cell, and the priest tells him, you know, tr trust in everything, you know, you, I've given you what you need, you know, God will guide the rest, and, you know, um... Edmund, he says, I don't believe in God. And the priest just responds, it doesn't matter. He believes in you. You know, and that's, that I think is a very profound quote. But um, we'll go ahead and close this out. I'll take Morocco for his walkie. Uh, Nate, go ahead and give us our closer. Bye, YouTube. Bye, Odyssey. This has been the Idiots Podcast episode. We don't know. <laughs> we don't idiot idiot podcast okay. yeah all right guys um <laughs> all right guys um i will see y'all the stream this afternoon it'll be more resident evil 7 meow meow bye